Hey, welcome. In this video, I'm going to give a brief overview of fundamental analysis. This term originally came about for the traditional stock market, and it basically just means evaluating the company that's being traded as a good company or a bad company and looking at the price and deciding is the value going to go up? Is it worth buying? So although this was originally for companies that are in the stock market, it can also be used in crypto trading as well. Crypto fundamental analysis consists of the study of the currency in its entirety, ranging from macro factors like the token economics and market cap to micro factors like price volatility. The metrics needed for crypto fundamental analysis can be placed into three categories, project metrics, financial metrics, and on-chain metrics. It's important to understand the distinction between technical analysis and fundamental analysis. Essentially, fundamental analysis is looking at the quality of the asset itself based on the team, the technology, everything that goes into it. While technical analysis is, for the most part, ignoring that and just looking at the trends on the trading charts and making predictions from there. Of course, these can be and are very often used together to make trades, but generally speaking, fundamental analysis is about the long-term value of the asset, while technical analysis is about the short-term value and when to trade to make short-term profits. So to use an analogy, if you were to use fundamental and technical analysis while betting on a football game, Fundamental analysis would be looking at the team and the players and the coach and their training and everything that goes into making a high quality competitive team. Whereas technical analysis would be more like watching the game and then using your knowledge about how the game usually goes based on what's happened to make short term bets about what's going to happen next. When doing fundamental analysis for crypto, Usually you start with a broader approach and then narrow it down as you move along. For example, an investor starts off by taking into account the market's health and tokenomics. Then they spiral down to the micro factors like marketing efforts and adherence to the roadmap initially laid out in the white paper of the project. Fundamental analysis is particularly useful in the crypto space when you're looking at which cryptos you want to buy and hold. Especially given the high volatility and the massive long term growth of the crypto market. So, the market has already seen thousands of crypto projects fail, but it's also witnessing an upsurge of new projects. And since the market is innately dynamic, having sound knowledge of a crypto's fundamentals can help in estimating the token's value and knowing if you should buy it based on where the price might go in the future or if you think. It's something that's overvalued and is probably just going to crash. So let's get right on to the essentials of fundamental analysis for cryptocurrency. When conducting a fundamental analysis for a cryptocurrency, there's a plethora of metrics and yardsticks that can be considered. Also, there's no single metric that provides substantial evidence to find the intrinsic value of a coin. Therefore, picking the right set of metrics is very important. So the metrics needed to, for fundamental analysis can be placed into three categories. We'll start with project metrics. The first of the project metrics is the white paper. The white paper is sort of a cryptocurrency tradition that began with Bitcoin when Satoshi released the Bitcoin white paper, which is now almost a sacred document in the space. And since then, most crypto projects release some sort of white paper as an explanation of the project before they even start the project online. So arguably, this is the most important metric of the cryptocurrency itself. It's a technical document that provides an in-depth view of the project, and it details the objectives, the means to achieve them, use cases, the technology used, the coin supply, and anything else that the team wants to put in there to give you an overall idea of everything they're trying to achieve and how they're going to achieve it. So. One red flag sometimes can be if there's no white paper or it's a very short white paper. So 
Generally speaking, most good projects have a very detailed white paper with, of course, some exceptions. The next thing you can look at is the team, which of course is the personnel behind the project. And a good personnel can instill a lot of trust amongst the users and investors. So this is the members of the team, their relevant experience, their expertise, and their public profiles are all factors that can build and maintain credibility. Next, we have the tokenomics. This dives into the supply, the nature and utility of the crypto token. It provides a framework for token mining, the supply type, and preliminary token allocation. An unclear or irrelevant tokenomics with no defined use case for the crypto is a red flag. This is another thing that you can often see in these overhyped sudden new tokens that end up going way up and then suddenly fail, falling down. If you look at the tokenomics of those, most of them had something that didn't really make any sense. And if you get good at evaluating tokenomics, you can build up your skill at recognizing something that's probably just made as a pump and dump versus something with actual utility in the space. So apart from these, we can evaluate a crypto project based on other metrics like competitors and the published roadmap. From here, let's go on to the financial metrics, starting with the market capitalization. The market cap of the product is the total circulating supply of the token and the token's current price. You can use this metric to determine the maturity of a project's value and its growth potential. Understanding the market cap can also help you to avoid buying a token just because it's very cheap. Some tokens have such a huge supply that they're super cheap, but if you look at the market cap, you'll find that in order to go to whatever random price people are pushing at, such as this random meme token to 10 cents, you might think, oh, I could buy it now at way less than one cent. If it went to 10 cents, I'd make tons of money. But you have to look at the whole supply because some of these tokens, the supply is so huge that for that to go to 10 cents, it would mean there needs to be maybe trillions of dollars in that token. And then you can evaluate, is this actually potentially going to happen? Or is that just some ridiculous dream? All right, for market capitalization, we can move on to looking at liquidity and volume. So the ease at which a currency can be traded in the market is measured as its liquidity. And trading volume helps towards understanding the cryptocurrency's liquidity levels. This is also very important because, again, if you're looking at these very small projects, sometimes the liquidity is really low, which means it's hard to buy these, hard to sell them, and it's just hard to move them at all which is often the case in the beginning of a new token. So like any metric, it can't be used as the single thing to look at, but it is important to evaluate when looking at the overall health of the project. Ideally, a coin must have a consistent trading volume with minimal bid ask spread. Then we can move on to on-chain metrics. The first of these is, the, is transaction counts. This is a measurement for the trading activity of a particular coin. Generally, a higher transaction count is beneficial for growth, but this metric can be easily manipulated by organized transfer of funds between related parties to keep the transaction count high. So just because there's a lot of transactions doesn't necessarily mean that there's a lot of people using it. Next, we have the transaction value. So unlike the previous metric, the transaction value is a better determinant of the actual coin's value. It evaluates the monetary value of transactions that took place within a specific time frame. Moving on from there, we have the transaction fee. This is a fee paid to the miners and validators to confirm transactions. It's a trustworthy indicator of the demand being generated for a particular coin. Higher gas fees means users are willing to pay more to get their transactions confirmed sooner, which can be an indication of trust in the network. All right, so that's a very brief overview of fundamental analysis. If you're interested, you can dive into it further, especially in the Femex Academy. So to recap, fundamental analysis can pay rich dividends, even in the crypto market. The ability to understand the true value of a coin, irrespective of its trading price, is very important. Similar to the stock market, relying on one discipline limits investors. Therefore, building a robust strategy that uses a combination of fundamental and technical analysis is ideal. This helps in identifying coins with profit potential and in timing trades. 
So again, technical analysis is a very good indicator to use when actually actively trading, whether it's day trading, swing trading, momentum trading, any of these kinds of trading. Fundamental analysis is also good to use with technical analysis so that you have a broader knowledge of whatever you're trading. However, fundamental analysis is also extremely useful even if you're not actively trading. Because if you just want to buy and hold, it's even more important that you understand the underlying value of the asset. So before you buy any cryptocurrency, especially if it's some altcoin, then it's really important to do some fundamental analysis to get some idea if it's actually worth what it's being sold at now or has a lot of potential to go up more if you really believe in the team and the fundamentals and the tokenomics and everything behind it. If you think it has a lot of potential for growth, then you can know, all right, I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna hold on because I believe it's gonna grow. Also, if you take the time to do fundamental analysis, you can save yourself from a lot of pain from just buying something because of the hype and then getting totally dumped on later whenever everybody sells out because it was actually a weak project to begin with. All right, that's all for fundamental analysis for today. Again, if you want to get into it deeper, you can check out our academy or hopefully some videos later on. If you found this video helpful or find any of our videos helpful, if you like watching them, if you like hearing me talk, remember, like the video, follow us on YouTube, share the video with our friends, and if you have something to say, say it down there in the comments. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time. If you don't have a Femex account yet, just click on the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen. Create a Femex account and you will get a seven day free premium membership trial and other trading bonuses. To learn more about Femex and cryptocurrencies, watch the videos on the box on the left. And if you're new to the crypto world, have a look at the videos on the right for some of Femex's user tutorials.